All right, and here now to talk more about President Biden's economic plan is Jared Bernstein, the chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Thank you so much, sir, for being here on this Friday. Really appreciate you coming on. Uh, the president has announced 35,000 projects in more than 4,000 communities, but a new CNBC poll found that 58% uh, in the survey actually disapproved of Biden's handling of the economy. Why do you think there's a disconnect between uh, the numbers the administration is touting and what people think about it? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, getting me out here on this uh, on this Friday. And I think there's a bit of a disconnect in uh, the two sides of the question you just asked. So we're talking about 35,000 projects in 4,500 communities, cities, states across the country. And if you go to those communities and you ask them, them specifically about the more granular key components of Bidenomics, the investments in America that they're seeing, touching, feeling in their communities, uh, these things poll north of 70%. Uh, I think a simple example that kind of uh, captures it for me is go to Flint, Michigan and ask people how they feel about uh, the Bidenomics project of replacing lead pipes with clean ones so that kids there don't have to drink poisoned water. As you can imagine, uh, that's going to pull through the roof. Same thing with the Infrastructure Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS Act, standing up a domestic semiconductor industry. These uh, more granular aspects of uh, Bidenomics uh, tend to pull quite well. And I, I, I do want to go back to the disconnect portion of that. So last week in the Washington Post, columnist Catherine Rampal wrote about uh, Biden, uh, Bidenomics. I'll quote her. She said, if you define Bidenomics as respecting Federal Reserve independence and not interfering with Fed decisions, even when they're unpopular, then sure. Great job, Bidenomics. Uh, what's your reaction to that quote? Um, well, bi Binomics is something that's been defined by Joe Biden, so I think we should probably start there. Uh, and he defines it as building the economy from the middle out and the bottom up. And he makes a really, I think, uh, compelling, clear, and evidence-based distinction between that and trickle-down economics, which has decades of evidence showing how that doesn't work. If you want to uplift the middle class and people who aspire to get into the middle class, you have to do the three pillars of Bidenomics. Invest in America, empower and educate workers, and promote competition on behalf of lowering costs and small business. That's Bidenomics, and it is in action, delivering results as we speak, as well as planting some very important growth seeds for the future. Well, okay, so the Fed is meeting next week, and Wall Street is projecting another rate hike, which would be the 11th since last March. And while the economy does appear clearly to be cooling down and inflation is easing, people will still see their credit cards and other loan rates go up. How will the administration avoid getting blamed for that? Because as we all know, uh, people tend to blame the president, uh, even if they know it's the Fed's decision. Well, uh, two points there. One is that we are very careful as a... Uh, uh, Catherine Rampell's quote suggested to stay out of the Fed's knitting when it comes to their monetary policy. And that is a very intentional uh, goal of ours set by the president ever since we've gotten here. You know, history is, is, is littered with economies that have been brought to their knees by compromising the independence of central banks. Now, look, I want to do a fact check on something that uh, you quoted early from a Republican operative. Uh, he, said, he said real wages are falling. So that's, that, that's, that's right up into the point where he said falling. It should have been rising. Real wages are actually rising over the past year. And in fact, they're up 1.6 percent for middle wage workers, and they're back on their pre-pandemic trend. Now, our work is not over. No victory laps here. We have to sustain those trends. And that's why when I talked about Bidenomics planting seeds for future growth, inclusive growth, growth in cities across this country, in rural areas, in communities of color, uh, in areas of electric vehicles, electric batteries, uh, semiconductors, that's to build on these favorable trends. But I think that we should probably get out of the business of citing stale t statistics about things that are no longer the case. Yeah, and, and that quote was from our report earlier. Um, uh, one other thing I do want to ask about, though, there, we are seeing a lot of strikes uh, happening. We have this high-profile strike with uh, Hollywood, with actors and writers. UPS is about to walk out, and the United Auto Workers seem headed for a strike as well. None of that is good for the economy, as we know. Uh, we had a guest on earlier when we were talking about the SAG and WGA strike. It's, it's different than the Rail Workers Union, of course, um, in the involvement that the White House can have in it, but is the administration preparing for some sort of mediation in order to get an agreement uh, together that'll benefit both sides? 
You know, historically, you've seen us be largely hands off uh, when uh, two sides, uh, when management and unions are uh, negotiating. In some of these cases, the negotiations haven't even begun. I think the, the right way to understand this from our perspective is we have one of the most pro-union presidents in history. We also have a great deal of responsibility, as you know, for uh, the overall functioning, not just of the uh, macro economy, but of people's micro economies, how they're doing in their homes. And in that regard, I think we, uh, before we end our conversation, I think we have to recognize that inflation is down for 12 months in a row on a yearly basis. It peaked at over 9% a year ago. It was 3% last seen. So that is a very important deceleration. It's something we're working on. When it comes to union negotiations, uh, you know, we, we really try to uh, let them work it out as best we can. All right, Jared Bernstein, chair of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Really appreciate your time. Have a good weekend. My pleasure.